Anna de Rothschild boasted about her family lineage while wearing expensive designer clothes, a Rolex watch, and driving her $170,000 Mercedes. Being a part of the Rothschild family sure does have its perks, being the most famous European banking family for the last 200 years. A year before the FBI raid of Mar-a-Lago was when Anna went golfing with the A-listers. That evening, she joined them for dinner at an Italian restaurant, where she continuously talked about her life as a daughter of the Rothschild family. John Lefebvre, another attendee, noticed how everyone was eating it up. Those who knew her, including Paul Barton, a very wealthy property developer, claimed she talked about opening a high-class hotel in Monaco, a Formula One racetrack in Miami, and developing a luxury housing project in Emerald Bay. Barton claimed that everyone thought that her grandfather was the one who had the money. He stated that his company paid for her to fly out to a resort project in the Bahamas three times. They offered to sell their residential development for $55 million, but they made no such sale. You can probably imagine her delight at being invited to Mar-a-Lago for a golf outing with Donald Trump, Lindsey Graham, and other political luminaries. There, she talked about her family's vineyards and estates and how it was growing up in Monaco. According to Anna, a confident 33-year-old woman, she was allowed inside without question where she could meet with potential investors for her company. She was never related to the Rothschild family. Her name is Inna Yashishin, and she wholly fabricated her Anna identity. Inna Yashishin was an immigrant from Ukraine. Her parents were truck drivers who moved to the United States at least a decade ago. While her parents live in Chicago, Inna has spent time in Montreal, Canada, as well as Miami, Florida, about an hour away from Mar-a-Lago. She also got married to a man named Sergei Golubev. When the FBI questioned him, he stated that their marriage was only on paper to help her get her United States residency. He claimed that she needed something more permanent. He hadn't been in contact with her since their divorce in 2016. In 2010, Miss Yashishin founded a charity in Canada called United Hearts of Mercy. In 2015, she founded another one in Miami. United Hearts of Mercy claimed that their goal was to help liberate children from spiritual, social, economic, and physical poverty in places such as Africa, the Dominican Republic, Republic, Haiti, the United States, and Canada. Yashishin also admitted to working as an independent consultant for a company called Ambit Energy, a firm that was fined in 2019 for defrauding customers. She also worked for a company called Miami Mama. This South Florida company was very controversial for helping expectant Russian mothers give birth in the United States in order to gain citizenship. During this time it was when she met Valerie Tarasenko. In 2014, Valerie Tarasenko, a 44-year-old Russian businessman, met Inna Yashishin and the two forged a very close relationship. Recently, their relationship has turned for the worst as they entered into a legal battle against each other. With this, their stories about their relationship change depending on who's telling them. According to Tarasenko, he hired Yashishin to be the nanny to his two daughters while he was out. She claimed that she was never his nanny. Instead, they were in a supposed romantic relationship where he coerced her to steal money from men on the street, in restaurants, or even at events. They supposedly used the money to fund their lifestyle together. Yashishin claimed that she would form a relationship with men. Then Tarasenko would take her phone and send messages asking for money to help pay for phone bills, food, etc. Although Tarasenko would deny everything, including their relationship, the FBI found romantic apology texts sent from Tarasenko to Yashishin. The Post-Gazette and the the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project, or OCCRP for short, would interview two men who admitted to giving money to Yashishin and being scammed by her for thousands of dollars. We have no way to prove which one of them was behind the phone scamming men. However, we know that Tarasenko and Yashishin worked together to open both United Hearts of Mercy locations. To avoid publicly announcing how much revenue the charity made, they claimed that the charity made less than $50,000. However, according to their own internal documents, United Hearts of Mercy actually made over $200,000 in 2020 to help with COVID relief. However, it was soon cut off by payment processors due to suspicion of fraud. In 2021, Tatiana Verselina, the charity's certified accountant, made a sworn statement to the FBI claiming that she had helped set up the Stripe Inc. account for the charity. She stated that the charity was a source of illicit funds for organized crime. 
Stripe Inc. determined that the money flowing into the charity was coming from credit cards and bank accounts not authorized by owners in Hong Kong. When trying to reach out to them, every single email had bounced back, meaning they were all fake emails intended to confuse the payment processing system. Fundraiser.com confirmed to OCCRP that they shut down one of the charity funding drives run under Versalina's name in 2020. It failed internal fraud checks even before it could deposit money. Versalina stated that shortly after making the account, she started receiving threatening phone calls from unknown numbers, claiming that if she didn't return the money, she and her family would be harmed and killed. Her family, living in Russia, received many of the same type of phone calls as well. So what's going on here? Well, Tarasenko had two daughters. His older daughter, 18-year-old Sophia, wanted to become a musician, so, according to Yashishin, Tarasenko changed her last name to Rothschild in order for her to have a better shot at making it big in America. On Sophia's Instagram, it shows her going by the name Sophia Rothschild, and you can see that she's trying to become a well-known musician. Sophia plays multiple instruments, dances, and sings. There's no evidence that she was involved in any misconduct. Yeah, Shushin claims that it was Tarasenko's idea to create limited liability companies. He had her change the name of the Canadian location to Rothschild's Media Company, Inc. She also states that it was Sophia who publicly started calling her Aunt Anna de Rothschild. As for the Mar-a-Lago incident, she claims she was invited by one of Sophia's friends, Elkanen Elki Adamker, the founder of a New York financial services company. She says nobody asked for identification, so she never provided it. They invited her to dinner with the others, including former Missouri governor Eric Graytons. He had invited her to a fundraiser he would be hosting and signed four books for her. It wasn't until March 2022 that anyone knew that there had been a breach of safety for the former president. Dean Lawrence, a Florida music promoter and exotic car leasing agent, attended an evening dinner with Trump insiders at Mar-a-Lago. The dinner included people such as rappers Kodak Black and Ray J, along with Donald Trump and former New York Police Commissioner Bernard Carrick. He warned attendees that Anna de Rothschild was a fraud. He had informed them that he recognized Inna from her company Rothschild Media Label, where they were currently promoting Tarasenko's daughter, who used Rothschilds as a stage name. When he told Kofod, a Trump campaign donor, and Caroline Wren, a former national advisor of the Trump campaign, he claimed that Kofod's eye had grown wide as he explained that Inna Yashishin had been to his house. Lawrence was distraught by the idea that he was the one divulging the news of a potential breach to Trump insiders rather than the ones who are supposed to be protecting the Trump family. He was the one trying to understand how they allowed this to happen. He, along with many people, asked the same question as to how someone with a fake identity could so easily stand next to critical political figures multiple times without being caught. This raises questions about why security did no background check on her. Was it a political intelligence breach or was it a financial fraud case? Due to the contradicting stories, her motives are unknown. Two years prior, two different Chinese women were arrested on two separate occasions after entering Mar-a-Lago with thumb drives containing malicious software. The openness of Mar-a-Lago and the ability to walk in without a background check were finally being realized. This instance was what triggered the FBI to look into Anna, or as we know her, Ina. Tarasenko filed filed an affidavit in Miami-Dade County Court claiming that Yashishin was part of an international criminal organization. He said that she went through many different identities for wealthy dynasties, including Anna Kruger, a family who made their fortune in paper, and Inessa Cavalli, an Italian family. They owned a fashion company worth more than $500 million. He also claimed that Yashishin worked for the most brutal oligarchs in Russia, including working for Putin indirectly. When the FBI questioned Yashishin, she stated that she was was invited to Mar-a-Lago and was there looking for investors for Rothschild's media company, Inc. She claimed that Tarasenko continues to use her to get money from investors and that he keeps track of her every move. According to her, she never told people that she was Anna de Rothschild and it was Tarasenko who fabricated the entire story. Yashishin also stated that this isn't the first time that Tarasenko has filed a lawsuit against her. Every time she leaves him, he doesn't. The first time was when he claimed that she had gone after his daughter. Yashishin went ahead and filed a restraining order against him. According to her attorney, Tarasenko has violated the restraining order multiple times. Yashishin thinks it's ridiculous that Tarasenko would claim that she's a Russian spy. To her, Russian people basically are her enemy since they 
invaded her country and went after her family. As for the multiple fake IDs and passport that show her name being Anna Rothschild, she claims that Tarasenko created them all. She said she had nothing to do with them. According to her, all she wanted was to be free from him. Yet Shishin claimed that every single move she made was directed by Tarasenko. She even claims to have resigned from both businesses to help get out of his control because after the first few times, she realized that he was just using her. Yet Shishin claimed that her friends and supporters encouraged her to get out of her toxic relationship. So she did. Little did they know that she was wrapped up in a huge scam that the FBI would soon follow her every move. So let's review. According to Tarasenko, Yashishin has multiple identities and works as a Russian spy. According to Yashishin, Tarasenko is the ex who filed fake lawsuits against her and forced her to do his bidding. We don't know who the criminal mastermind is with all the evidence presented. It's clear that both parties are allegedly involved in a fraud case with their limited liability companies, but does the story go deeper than that? Who do you think is telling the truth? Is Tarasenko right about Yashishin being a Russian employee? Why would he continue violating a restraining order against him? And what about all the times that he's been caught lying in the past? There's no way to prove that it was Tarasenko sending messages to the men with whom she would form relationships. Only time and more investigation will help uncover the mystery behind this case. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comments section who you think has a better chance to get reelected, Donald Trump or Joe Biden?